So I want to talk about blood sugar. If you aren't getting your labs done every year, looking at your fasting glucose, your hemoglobin A1C, which is your three month average of, of your fasting glucose, and even your insulin, which lets you look at how hard is your pancreas working to keep that in range, then you're probably missing some of the picture. So you wanna do all three of those. And you want your blood sugar on labs to be about 85 to 100. And what that means is that you're in the Goldilocks zone. Your body isn't working too hard to get your blood sugar down, super inflammatory in your arteries. And it's not working too hard to get it up, which means that you're hypoglycemic and your brain is starving for, for glucose. Now, if you have a fungal overgrowth, it's gonna automatically hijack your blood sugar and you're gonna tend to spike and drop. That's just what happens. But let's assume that's not the situation here, okay? Let's just assume that your blood sugar is starting to creep up. Now, this can happen even if your diet's really good because you start to lose some of your mechanisms. You have two mechanisms to get glucose in your bloodstream into your cells. You have what's called insulin. This is a key that unlocks the cell to let insulin in. And you also have what's called a GLUT4 receptor. And that GLUT4 receptor sits in the cell. It doesn't require a key and it increases with exercise. So guess what? Exercise is your best friend because it's gonna increase your GLUT4 receptors. You're gonna become super efficient at getting that glucose out of your bloodstream and into your cells, which is where it's needed because it's the fuel for your body and especially your brain. Your brain is very, very dominant in glucose. Okay, now, if your blood sugar when you're fasting it starts to get between 100 and 125, we call you pre-diabetic. -pre what that means is you're losing your compensation mechanisms and that is not good because it causes all kinds of inflammation, in particular in your arteries. It's cause of heart disease, actually. Um, among other things, and your brain. We have an epidemic of brain-based dementia and Alzheimer's, and the number one precursor that nobody talks about is blood sugar, because when your blood sugar is spiking and dropping, this causes you to have more inflammation in your brain. This is just one mechanism. It causes you to increase your, your, your cortisol, which is going to cause the part of your brain that is the breaks for cortisol to become exceeding, their ex, exceeding the metabolic rate and dying or damage, being damaged. And it also causes you to, um, well, there's a lot of mechanisms, but just suffice it to say that if that's happening, it's the precursor for losing your mind. Keep your blood sugar tight, right? Know what it is. Continuous glucose monitors, we use those a lot in the office. Those are really great for you to be able to see if you're exceeding your carb tolerance. How much carb can you have before you exceed your blood sugar? So all those are all really good things that you can do on your own. I hope that's helpful.